Web Radio and Bright House Network's Channel 10 present the Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. Well, a very good evening, Kern County, and a very special, special night tonight. We are downtown at Bakersfield High School, the high school in Bakersfield, if you're talking about the history and the legacy of Kern County High School football. The undefeated Drillers at 7-0 in 2011, hosting the Centennial Golden Hawks, 4-2 and overall, 2-0 and in league play tonight, a matchup of perennial powerhouses, the visiting Golden Hawks. At Bakersfield High School, let's go down to the grass to our BHS driller. He's in the Bakersfield High School Football Hall of Fame. Our captain, Brian Adams. Brian, what a night. Fans, you can't ask for a better the weather's great. The atmosphere's great. It's like an old-time throwback game. You see both stands full. You know, both teams were supposed to be thought rebuilding, and here they are both sitting undefeated in league, ready to battle. The ball taken. And his ankles hit the goal line. I think the official was trying to let him know the entire time. <laughs> it was Michael Martins on that. Let's welcome into the broadcast our partner up top with me, Matt Alvarez. Matt, as we always like to say with our perfect grammar, it don't get no better than this. What a nice football game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have the hype of Centennial last year with Cody Kessler, and I mean, they've still impressed people this year. We saw them earlier against Clovis. They blew a, a, a lead late, you know, lost in double overtime. But you look at Bakersfield High School, the winningest high school in California football high school history. Right on the back of their jerseys, Vance, you'll read Legacy. That's what this place is. It's a legacy here at Bakersfield High School. So no specific last names on their jerseys. It's legacy. Breston in trouble and a legacy of great defense from the drillers throughout the 100 years, led by Kyle Pope, one of many that came in on that tackle. So we're going to see a lot of that tonight, just getting right after Breston. Yeah, Bakersfield High School's defense is one of the best in the Valley, one of the best in the section. And Breston didn't have a lot of time. I mean, you see Centennial, obviously we saw them earlier in the year running the spread offense, uh, passing it a lot with Breston, putting their faith in their quarterback, who has been the shadow of Cody Kessler the past four years at Centennial High School. And they come back out in the spread four wide with one in the backfield with him. Second and 21 officially. Breston in the shotgun. Quick look to the left. Puts it out there to his right, our left, incomplete. Intended out there for Michael Martins, the normally sure-handed Martins. Let that go. So, Matt, right out of the chute, it's third and very long. Uh, I mean, they tried two pass plays. Obviously, the first one was the sack, and then Martins has to grab onto that. I don't know if he would have gotten very many yards on that pass play anyway. I mean, it was a pass out in the flat. Maybe it would have gone for a gain of one or two. But Centennial needs a big gain here. Third and, well, it says 21. I guess it is third and 21, Vance. Did we miss something here? Nope. Oh, the sack, right. The sack was what moved it back 11 yards. I was thinking maybe there was a penalty with all the penalties we've seen recently. Strong right side for Bresson. They stay on the ground. They hand off to the left. It's a big hole, a big run, and it's up to the 25-yard line. And um, that's going to be close. It's going to be interesting. No first down, but uh, we'll see what Coach Nixon decides to do here as we see our first big replay of the game. Well, you see the run straight up the middle. It's number 24, Colts Paxton. And Paxton able to get it up inside. I mean, he had some great blocking. Like you said, Vance, they ran a strong to the right. They had three receivers, so that's where a lot of the defense was keyed on. But Centennial forced a punt. First punt of the night. It's a beauty. A nice one, a long one, taken at the 30-yard line by Kevin Elijah Jr. Elijah Jr. looking for some blocks down the near side, and he gets knocked out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. So a good run back. The driller faithful likes it. Centennial likes the fact that he didn't run it all the way back. Today in Zach, uh, Zach's article in the Bakersfield, California, he talked to Coach Gola, talked to Coach Nixon. The title or the theme of the article was about special teams, and I think 
The Golden Hawks are just glad this didn't go back for six. Well, notice how he's swinging that ball a lot. You know, Pat, uh, if you're Elijah, you want to hold on to that ball as best as you can. And I think that BHS actually got away with the block in the back there on the near side. As you see BHS and Chris Hannibal, their all-star quarterback, taking the field here near midfield at the 49-yard line. Hannibal has two receivers, and they're in the wing. He sends his man Vickers in motion. Now he's going to reset on this first down play. Vickers goes in motion again. They hand it up the middle to Silas Nasita, and Nasita gets about four yards. Good story on Nasita, Vance. He's actually committed to go play in the Ivy League. You believe that? I mean, that's that's a smart kid right there. I mean, if, if his football career doesn't continue, I mean, you obviously know he's going to be doing big things in this in this great world we live in. Second. Tell you a little story after this. It's going to be second and five here for BHS. They send another man in motion. Hannibal's going to run the option. Hannibal has it still on his feet. Gets all the way up to the 35-yard line. So two plays into their drive. BHS is already down on the Centennial 35. Brian, what was your thoughts on Silas Nasita? Well, you know, before the game at halftime, Coach Gola invited some of the former uh, players to come back, and he did a whole presentation on then, now, and forever the legacy and their time now and there was a question he asked about the alma mater song and everybody referred to Nasita as what the answer is that nobody else knew. Well Nasita was their stalwart in the backfield last year as he is again this year he gets that handoff and he gets about five or six yards it looks like maybe a gain of seven actually. You're watching a high market. school football game of the week exclusively on Bright House Networks we're the only place you can see an entire football game in its entirety and tonight it's on channel 10 it'll be on demand on channel 300 we're in the first quarter at bakersfield high school as the drillers already looking at his second and three on the golden hawks 35 hannibal hands the ball up the middle to see that again plowing through we'll see who wins that battle up front tonight's one of those nights where it's a who's who Pretty much everybody in the football world that wants to see a big game comes to this game. I look down right below us on the 25-yard line, the great one, Ryan Redstone, and he's got some guy with him named Bo. <laughs> so even the big names out tonight. Eight and a half left in this first quarter. Almost looked like some motion, but Hannibal keeps it, cuts up field. Hannibal looks like he's going all the way, stopped at the three-yard line. Well, Captain, it's not taking long for this blue crew to uh, to get in the field here on offense. Well, no, they have it going right now. You know, when the Cedars gets those quick hitters, it really gets everything going. And Hannibal's mm. just a great story. We'll talk about that as well during the game. He does a great job of managing the offense and getting them in the production they need. And obviously with the 40-something points they're averaging the game and that big comeback last week, he was the man to score. First and goal from the three. And it looks like it's going to be in, and it is in. Jeremiah Reddick pounds it in, and in less than four minutes, the drillers are on the board. While well, the drillers showing no signs of stopping here in that first drive. I mean, Centennial, I don't even know if they held into a negative play. Every play was a gain on that drive, so that's good for the BHS offense. Now we have to see how the Centennial offense responds as... Another Alvarez kicking school uh, clinician, I guess you'd call him, Parker Campbell. Kicks the extra point up and through. Parker Campbell through the middle, so it's seven to nothing. It's homecoming tonight at Bakersfield High School. We seem to be very lucky in getting homecoming games on our schedule this year. Good for us. <laughs> and uh, Driller. Nation is alive and well. The uh, cement stands that have become an iconic fixture in the downtown area as you go down California Avenue. Packed to the gills, the balloons arching over the stands. And over here on the Golden Hawk side, a very full stands until it gets down here. It kind of thins out just a little bit on the northeast side of these stands, but uh, the crowd's still coming in. I know, Matt, you were. And as all of us, you know, in a parking crunch to get over here, and I left early tonight and still had to walk about two miles to get in. Big crowd tonight. Yeah, I parked over uh, somewhere near Tehachapi <laughs> and finally somehow managed to make my way over here. By the way, Vance, I loved playing at this place when I was in high school. You know, I played soccer here as well as football. 
because the stands here on the visitor's side, as I'm sure you'll be able to see throughout the game, are so close to the action. I mean, there were some pros and cons with that. Uh, one of the cons obviously being my father deciding to uh, try and coach me from 10 feet away as opposed to having a nine lane track in between uh, myself and him. Hey man, that's the world of basketball every night. There Mom you go, and that's Dad true. Right there close. So the score is 7 nothing here. Let's see what the Golden Hawks can do here, Matt. Can they get something rolling here on offense? Uh, they're going to have to, to get going on this series. Can't go another one without getting something rolling here. Yeah, well, it was a three and out on Centennial's first possession, and unfortunately, they were, uh, you know, th that sack, that sack really dropped them back about 11 yards, as you see tonight's officials. The referee, Joe Saldivar, the umpire, Bob Williams, headlinesman, Ruben Sanchez, line judge, Sean Carlson, and the back judge, Angel Gonzalez, all members of the Kern County Official Association as the handoff goes off to the left side. Alec Zubia on the carry. You know, Captain, one of the big stories coming in tonight for the Golden Hawks, gonna be out with, we're gonna be without one of their key running backs. Um, in a game like this, against an opponent like this, you want all your weapons, but if you don't have them, you don't have them. Well, Vance, if you don't have them, other guys don't have to make up for each other. They just have to play solid football to the best of their ability. And if they can do that, they can give themselves a chance. But the one thing they got to do is they got to stay out these negative plays on first down. Well, I stand correct, Vance. It's not Thomas Grimes. It's Bryce Royal who's actually going to be out for this one. As you see Grimes in the huddle as yet another penalty. Or check that. That's only the first penalty of the game. As it looks like Centennial is going to be marked off. Oh, about 10 yards or so. They're going to put themselves in another hole. I'm telling you, Vance, the first play of the game was a sack. Moved them back 10 yards. They weren't able to recover from that. Now it's a first and 20, it looks like, from their own 10-yard line. So two rough starts for the Golden Hawks. Not what Coach Nixon dialed up. I can guarantee you that. As far as their first play from the line of scrimmage, let's see what happens. Two running backs stand back there with Bressel. That was actually a, Regan the, Enger. It was a direct snap, I think, to Colby Minnie Vance as a oh, he's the one who took the snap. Oh, that's number 13. You're right. That that is Anger, but what in the world? Uh, they have a quarterback situation already. You think maybe Bresson, as I'm looking here on this near sideline, Bresson's actually standing over there on the 20-yard line. He looks to be okay. I guess they're just trying to give BHS another look. So again, Regan Enger in the shotgun. And the BHS defense looks like they're about ready to go on a feast. Enger, quick shot out to the left side. It's complete and it's caught. It'll be down at about the 22-yard line. Well, that was a sharp throw by Enger, you see here on our replay that Enger just able to take it back. Maybe a quick little two-step drop and then fire it over to the far side. That's not going to... Completion was to Elijah Frazier. That's not going to do you very well, though, in the long run. It's still going to be third and about seven here. Six and a half remaining in this first quarter. The Drillers already up 7 nothing. Had a commanding drive down the football field. The crowd's getting into it. It's homecoming tonight. Anger, the quarterback in the shotgun. And now we have the whistles blow. The flag comes up. Did it take too long to get that play off, or was there some motion? Yeah, the right tackle moved. be a false start. Another penalty against the Centennial offense will move him back five yards. Little jumpy. You see Centennial coached by Brian Nixon. The assistants Dave Rice, Justin Crane, Todd Hanson, Joey Reese, Dale Tedro, and Richard Parrott. And obviously for the Drillers, Paul Gold, the head coach, we talked about him, Johnny Moran, Terry Chapman, Demarcus Clear, Darren Carr, Bill Solon. I mean, they have a lot of assistant coaches here. We'll get to them eventually, Vance, as it's third and 12 now for Centennial. Bresson goes long, throws it, but he's hit. He's hit. Interception at the 30. Most likely, he's going to go all the way in, and he does. Touchdown, Drillers. Derek Vickers had the early Christmas present fall right in his hands, and off he goes. Well, you see Bresson was hit as he threw, just like you said, Vance. 
and that was gift wrapped. Merry Christmas, Happy Halloween, whatever you want to call it. Vickers into the end zone, nearly untouched. I mean, he got inside the five before a tackle was even attempted. And it looks like BHS having some personnel problems here on the extra point as Parker Campbell winds up for his second try of the evening. Nonetheless, oh boy, this one looks like it may get out of hand early if this keeps up. As you see Coach Gola over there in the 35-yard line, he's not happy oh, yeah. that his uh, PAT team is not uh, dialed in. And, I mean, when you're having personnel problems in week seven, that is not a good sign. And he talked about special teams. Okay, sure, they're up 13-0. Now they're up 14-0. Um, but when it's the theme of the article in the local newspaper that you're working on everything in special teams all practice, or, or every day all week long, and then to have uh, your, your, your personnel on there, it's a small, minor thing after you're up two touchdowns early. However, it's going to get on a, a coach like Coach Gold's nerve. Let's go down to the captain. Well, Cap, uh, Take off the blue and white, put on the gold and orange. If you're Coach Nixon right now, what are you telling your boys? Hey, it's two touchdowns early. You still got, a, what, three and a half quarters to go. Just settle down. Right now, we're not giving ourselves a chance. We're messing up on first down, putting us in a hole. Let's get a good positive play on first down, and then just slowly but surely track our way back in the game. Well, we see a shot of him there, Matt. He seems to be chagrined, no doubt. I mean, it's, what you want to do against a team, obviously, who's ranked number one in the central section, number one in the valley, number one in our hearts, what you want to do against a team like this is you want to not let them get out to an early jump start like they have now. And I'm sure that's what Coach Nixon preached in the locker room before the game. That's what he preached on the bus ride over. Don't let these guys get a jump start on you. And that's exactly what they've done thus far. Third kickoff of the game for the Drillers. And it's taken at the five yard line, so they'll have a chance here. And they get it up to about the 25 yard line. So the uh, return is Zach Clayton. Clayton gets it up to about the 25. Let's see if the uh, Golden Hawks gets, gets something together. Again, you're watching Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week. My name is Vance Palm. I'm joined up high as always with Matt Alvarez. And down on the grass is our captain, Brian Adams. Brian, you played a lot of football games on this field, and we've called a lot of games on this field, and it's homecoming tonight, and you used your power and influence to get us a little pregame meal. How's it feel to be back, big guy? Well, you know, it always feels great to be back. You know, it's a very welcoming place. Like they say, once a driller, always a driller. And, you know, just to be here, we've been, it's been a while since we've been back to BHS, but good environment. And right there, you know, Centennial Day, that's a win. You might have got a yard, but the last two series, you've been going back 10 or 11, so... Good play right there, but yeah, it's just great to be Vance. And Coach Gola has embraced the alumni and brought us back and asked us to do stuff and support, so it's just been an awesome experience this year. Thank you, Captain. All right, here we go. Here come the Golden Hawks. 5-10, 5-11 remaining here in this first quarter. Hard count, good idea. Anger is going to take it, cuts up the middle, runs it in his seat and a host of drillers. Might have picked up one or two. Like that hard count. It's a way to get five the easy way. Yeah, unfortunately, all the penalties have gone against Centennial thus far. As you see, Anger trying to follow his blocker there. But, I mean, there's just too many drillers there. Too many drillers and not enough Golden Hawk blockers. It's going to go down for a gain of one, but... On a third and nine now, Centennial has been 0 for 2 on third downs thus far. You know, guys, not to interrupt, but one thing, the receivers are going to have to make a play. Watch Jermaine Irvin in the corners, how they're going to play against the receivers. If you're a receiver and defensive back is challenging this, challenging like this, you have to make a play. Anger drops back. And quarterback keeper on a little bit of a keeper option. Uh, third and probably picked up four or five, but he needed nine, so nothing doing yet. And with this driller offense like they're playing, I think there's no question you got to boot this football. Yeah, exactly. You see Anger able to get around a couple of drillers, but the punt team comes out onto the field hastily running out on the field, and it's going to be a punt by number 80, Andrew Doherty. 
low snap. He's able to handle it. And another nice boot. And it's taken this time at the 35. Not a bad job by the Centennial defense, but a late flag. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, another penalty. Another personal foul penalty this time. I believe it'll be a hit out of bounds. Yep. He kind of rode him out. He jumped on him. Khalil Chagall jumped on him, and he just kind of drug him out there. A uh, nice return by Jermaine Irvin, but it's going to go against the Golden Hawks. So even with a long punt like that, tack on more yards at the end of it, and it just gets to be more and more aggravating if you're uh, Coach Nixon. Here's a good look at Irvin right here, Matt. Yeah, you see Irvin on the replay. Let's see what happens here as he gets the stiff arm in his face, and then, yep, number one. That was Khalil Chagog, like you said. And unfortunately for him, that's going to result in 15 free yards for the drillers who don't need that if you're Centennial right now because it's already 14 zip. Try to crunch it up the middle. Uh, they get up to about the 43 yard line, and that's going to be Nasita. 3 12 remaining here in this first quarter. We're at Bakersfield High School where they're hosting. The Golden Hawks Centennial on homecoming tonight. Quarterback Chris Hannibal. Nasita right behind him. Hannibal on a keeper option. Pitches it out perfectly. Took the hit at the very last second to Kyle Pope. He gets it out to. And Pope, Jr., right there. I mean, I mean, Hannibal hung on to the very last second, Matt. Yeah, that's a dangerous pitch when you're going to the ground, but he was able to find Pope. He was able to make something of that. However, uh, you, know, you don't really suggest that if you're Coach Gola to pitch the ball on your way to the ground, but they made something of it. Third and three now for the Drillers. Big play for the Centennial Golden Hawks, but it's essentially two down territory for the Drillers anyway, probably. Hannibal wants to go to the air, has a man. Nice coverage out there. Zach Clayton glued him, flag on the play, and... Uh, the, the Golden Hawks hold them, but there's a flag on the play. It, it's at the line of scrimmage, man, so that's more than likely an offensive penalty, and it is. It's a illegal formation call. Illegal formation against the driller, so that'll march him back five yards. Got clarification on this last week uh, while doing the Jack Frost games, actually here at BAHS. If it's a dead ball and he does his hands like that, that means it's a false start. But if he does his hands like that and it's not a dead ball, it's always an illegal formation call. So, got it, Matt. Something that confused me up in the press box doing these youth games on Saturday, which I love doing, by the way. <laughs> and BC with us. And BC. And high school. And you're doing soccer. Yep. You are the human ESPNs, my friend. Appreciate that. Third and eight, Hannibal. Has the seated right behind the balls on the 38. Hannibal goes to his right, pitches out again. A dangerous pitch, but this time it sure worked. What a nice play as he kicks it out to Vickers. Hannibal was basically wrapped up and shoveled it out. Now he's making it work, and more power to him if he does that. But you see Hannibal going around, or he goes to the inside of his tackler, and he finds Vickers out there, and Vickers able to outrun the Centennial defense pretty easily up until Martins tackles him around the 25-yard line. And it'll be a first down for BHS. Two minutes left to go here in the first. Brian, he sure feels comfortable and confident pitching that ball awfully late. Well, he definitely does, but it's working because the guys keep good pitch relationship with him. They're the ones really making it available for him to make the pitch. If you watch the, the, the wing backs, they don't fly out too far. They stay near him, so he has a good pitching angle, and he's able to pitch on the way, go, on the way down. But let me tell you a little bit about this young man and Chris Hannibal. You know, he's a great story. Uh, I grew up with his mother. He lost his mother some years back. His uncle and his aunt, and his other uncle, he lives with his aunt, Alicia, and they've just taken great care and raised a great young man. You couldn't pick a better young man to be out here for BHS. Well, he's going to put the ball in the air right now, Hannibal is, and it's incomplete. His receiver slipped and uh, almost had it, but uh, Brian, thank you for that insight on the BHS quarterback, Chris Hannibal, a senior. Long line of great quarterbacks out there, and he dropped it. Great coverage by our cameraman. You see on the instant replay that pass was intended for Parker Campbell. That's why he kicks and uses his feet. 
Yeah. No, just kidding, Vance. But in all seriousness, though, that was a tough pass for Campbell to handle. He was going across his body trying to catch that as a timeout is going to be taken by the drillers. So BHS takes the timeout. The score is 14 to nothing. A buck 11 remains in this first quarter. We are at Bakersfield High School where the drillers hosting the Golden Hawks. The drillers 7-0. And they're, as Matt said, ranked number one across the board. And Vance, did you hear what he said too? Number one in our hearts. Yeah, hey, Brian, that sounds Brian. like a man that wanted to be a driller. Hey, Brian, when he said that, <laughs> I, I didn't I, forget that. When he said that, I kind of just well, first of all, not in this Arvin Bearheart. I can guarantee you that. But again, let's go back to last week. Brian, you don't think I'm going to let Matt just slide out of last week's comment when we were at East High School and he said, oh, the drillers are in another category. And you said, wait a minute. And you gave a little bit of uh, uh, pushback on Frontier and making it a close game. And it ended up being a very close game. I want to hear both of your comments uh, at the next opportune time about what you said, Brian, that, hey, when you're on top and you're winning all these games handily, sometimes a team can sneak up on you. And I want to hear Matt's, uh, of course, wise observation on Frontier and how they hung in there and stayed in there. Right now it's three, third and ten with a buck 11 here and a big, big third down defensive play for the Golden Hawks. Hannibal takes a look, one back behind him. Sends one in motion. Hannibal wants to go in the motion again. He can't do it. Option didn't work. He gets wrapped up and thrown down. So a good play by Centennial, almost as if they knew it was coming. Yeah, finally a third down stop for the Golden Hawks as Hannibal, it looked like he wanted to pitch. I mean, he turned his head. He was like, ah, ah, ah. oh, no, I better not. And he took the sack, and it looks like it's going to set up a field goal opportunity here for the Drillers. 44-yarder upcoming here for Parker Campbell. Parker, I say good. down the middle, and it goes almost to the fence. Wow, that would be about a 75-yarder. Campbell, the snap, the hold. It is up. It is beautiful, and it's almost to the fence, Brian. You're right. What a long, long boot by Parker Campbell. Man, I hope we can see that again. I don't know if our uh, director, Birdie, has it, but talk us through this kick. If we get the replay, Matt, I want you to give us some technical uh, some technical insight because to the naked eye, to this layman, boy, did it look good. Yeah, Campbell, you know, like I said, he worked with us, myself and my father, during the summer, and the kid just came to us with raw, pure talent. He's got a great leg. He's, he's got a great kickoff leg. As you've seen, he's already kicking him down here to the end zone each time. And that field goal just showed that, you know, that Paul Gola can trust him from outside. Is here you see the kick, small stutter step to start off. His head's down the entire way. Look how high that ball gets, Vance. I mean, that's not Brian, bad. Well, Brian wasn't joking, man. That was a long, long ways. You know, Campbell is a junior this year, six foot, a buck seventy. So I mean, this kid has a potential. To be obviously, he plays wide receiver for BHS as well, but he has the potential to be a pretty good kicker. How about last Saturday night, fellas, or Saturday afternoon? We're down there for the BC Ventura game, having a pregame watching SC and Notre Dame. Hadari's national television banging them away for the Mustangs. So exciting times to be a kicker in Kern County. Campbell smashes another one up high. This is going to float into the end zone, and that'll do it. So it'll be first and 10 from the 20 yard line. The Golden Hawks trail by 17 right now they have not scored and the drillers taking an early command of this important game here in late october again i'm vance palm joined by matt alvarez and brian adams and uh i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag kern county i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag last week we were prognosticating that we would be at Stockdale next week for a BHS Stockdale matchup. But we aren't 100% sure on that one yet, so I was maybe a little bit ahead of myself there. We'll see. On a first and 10, the Golden Hawks are going to try to run up the middle there and uh, not going to happen. So, again, I want to take back that affirmative statement we were making last week about being at the BHS Stockdale game. That's not 100% sure yet. And this may be the last play of the first quarter as we tick it down. They may not even get this off. They do. They stay on the ground. They go up the middle, and that'll do it. 17-0 at the end of the first quarter. Back in a moment on Bright House Network's Bakersfield with 
quarter number two at BHS. Break out of the box with Bright House Network's Whole House DVR service. Our Whole House DVR service makes it easy for everyone to enjoy their favorite shows. With options to record up to four HD channels at once, store up to 120 hours of HD programming, and view across multiple TVs in your home, something no other provider can offer. You're getting more entertainment and more convenience in more rooms. That's Bright House Network's Whole House DVR service. Learn more at brighthouse.com slash DVR. Wow, I can't believe you just told me that. Well, I felt that I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Well, do you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Second quarter here, Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. Ryan Adams is on the grass. Matt Alvarez right next to me. I'm Vance Palm. As we start quarter number two at BHS, the drillers all over the Golden Hawks right now, 17 and nothing. But the Golden Hawks have a third and six right below us. The football finally down on this side of the football field, right below us. Bresson. Sends Grimes in motion, kicks it out to Grimes. Grimes stops, back foots, goes back a little bit, and that may be just enough to have picked up a first down, a sorely needed first down, and I think Grimes' stutter step got him a first down. Yeah, the first first down of the game for Centennials. You said Bresson sent Grimes in motion, then hit him out in the flats. Nobody was around him for about five yards, and they up that little stutter step as you see the defender slip Asani Rufus. And there you go. Grimes able to pick up the first down at the 24 yard or at the 30 yard line. It's going to be a fresh set of downs for the Golden Hawks. Wow, that was exactly what the doctor ordered for Coach Nixon and his squad. First and ten. Russell looks over at Coach Nixon. Nixon audibleizes to him. Russell looks to his left, throws out to his left. Oh, and it's dropped. Oh, Doggone it! Michael Martin's had at least. At least six or seven or eight yards. Well, here's the problem. He tried to run before he had the ball in his hands. Huh. Huh. When you do he's that. He's having a tough night so far on that receiver, guys. He's he, he exactly right. He's not watching the ball all the way in. He's looking to make his move first. And with his size, you know, he's going to be able to roll some guys off him once he catches it. He's got to attack the ball with his hands and his eyes. The eyes have to see it. Hands have to attack it. Second and 10. What in the world's on the field there, Vance? It's a towel that belongs to Michael Martins, and he dropped it, and so the driller just left it on there. Strong right side, and I mean Quads. everybody on the right side. They're going to screen play this one out, and well read by that renegade D, I mean, renegade, by the driller defense, <laughs> Kevin Elijah Jr. I'm looking at Elijah Jr. come up, and he looked like Mercy Maston coming up from last year and this year. So, of course, I cross-promote the renegades on accident. But a great read here by the defense. Well, this season, the BHS drillers may be able to compete with the renegades as the, Kevin Elijah Jr. comes up and makes the tackle, or check that. Number 34, Andrew Agtang, actually the one with the tackle, but Elijah was definitely not fooled by that screen pass at all. It's going to be third and nine. Another long third down here for the Hawks. Russell looks over. He's got doubles on both sides. Here comes everybody from the drillers. They bring it at him, and Grimes with the catch, but uh, just not going to be enough as he's wrapped up out there by Darius Dallas. Darius Dallas. Yeah, that pump fake. Really gave Dallas an extra second to get over there and make the hit on Grimes as Dougherty set to punt for the third time tonight, if I'm correct. I believe it's his third punt of the night. Perfect deep snap. A high wobbler, and everybody's just going to get out of the way and let this thing bounce. And it bounces backwards, so the Golden Ox snatch it up at the 33-yard line. It'll be first and 10 drillers, and let's see if the drillers can come our way and uh, try to move that football to the north. Brian, 
You were recently inducted into the Bakersfield High School Driller Football Hall of Fame. And just for me, walking with you over to the concession stands in pregame, we were stopped by quite a few uh, gentlemen out there. One of we had a mutual friend that stopped and said hi to both of us. It's got to be fun for you. You know, it's always a pleasure to come back. You know, one thing about when you have the history of this program, people remember what you did when you were successful like anything else. But it really is a, a, a home atmosphere, and, and I just love the Driller family, and they've been great to me. First and ten, Hannibal to the left side, trying to make something happen here. The defense of the Golden Hawks hanging in there. Hannibal has so much room back there. He runs into his own guy. Was still able to chew up about eight yards. He ran into Kyle Pope, his lead blocker, or who became his lead blocker. I don't think that's how they <laughs> drew it up. Unless you see here, they send man in motion, and then Hannibal, I mean, he just took off out of the backfield as we were kind of screened by the offensive line. But Hannibal able to get around the block there, then boom, into his own man. He was able to get up, uh, up to the first down marker, Vance. Yeah, be a fresh it was set of close. Down. He must have picked up 10 and one inch. Great job by the Golden Hawk defense. This time they wrap up Hannibal and gets nothing and pays the price for it. Yeah, he got smoked right there at the line of scrimmage as Centennial not falling for the run up the middle is, boy, Centennial's losing a lot of apparel here, you see. There's gloves on the ground now. There's looks like socks, armbands, right at the line of scrimmage. That's Hannibal's pouch right there, the one that he keeps his hands in. But you know, guys, last week he was at the Cal High Sports Top 25 Player of the Week. So that's a pretty good honor with all the top teams in the state of California. He was, he was the Player of the Week. That's fantastic. Second and 10, a pitch out to Pope. Pope looks to the right side. What a nice job, a great tackle, and a good, good play from the Golden Hawks, Zach Clayton. So Clayton comes up and makes a nice tackle. Now Clayton, I believe, did we uh, say it was the younger brother of Adam Clayton over at BC, who's unfortunately season came to an abrupt end a couple weeks ago. He suffered a, uh, well, he, he tore a lot of things in his knee, Vance. I mean, that was a really gruesome injury to have to watch down on the sidelines. And uh, you know, I'm you sure gotta, that. Go ahead, Brian. You got to watch Kevin Elijah. He's their big play receiver. He's matched up one on one press, so he's going to get a chance to beat this coverage, possibly make a big play. On a second and 10, they send Dallas in motion. They throw it out there, and a uh, nice defensive effort out there by Khalil Shogog. Uh, the see, officials. Flag down. And young Kevin went out of bounds and came back in, so they're going to say he wasn't pushed out. All right, we're showing you some Halloween replay right now. <laughs> in our theme of spooky stuff. No full moon tonight, Vance. No, we're... Uh, how November far are we? 10th. Yeah, November how far are we 10th. away? We'll have a full moon here in Matthias. November 10th. Yes. Vance knows the calendar, the cycles, the lunar cycles, like the back of his hand. When's the next quarter move, Vance? Right now, third and 10. 7.52. It's fourth down, Vance. They declined. The That's what I thought, Brian. I was, wait a second. How can yeah. this be third? All right. Very good. Thank you. Not a hey, problem. Drillers are going to punt. Silas Nacida will go back to punt. He's going to Cornell next year. Be following in the footsteps of Jack Campbell Jr. Nacida puts one on the uh, look at look out. Ryan Redstone almost caught that baby. There's a picture of Bo Redstone right to the left of that pole right there. You see him, and, uh, and that's a driller great right there. And if his if, if young Ryan can be half of what his dad was, he's going to be in good company. I'll guarantee you he's going to be more than what his dad was. Don't tell him I said that, though, Pete. I'll keep it between you and me, man. <laughs> 7.43 remaining in this first half. The Centennial Golden Hawks have yet to uh, 
really make an offensive threat here. They're right below us, though, and they, the ball was on the 27-yard line now to start this series. That view you're getting, that angle you're getting, is exactly the scissor lift that Matt and I are on right now. So, first and 10, Golden Hawks. It's going to be another keeper by Enger, and uh, Enger picked up some positive yardage. They're about five or six yards. So a nice play by Regan Inger, the 6'2", 188-pound junior. I wonder what the deal is here with Bresson. I wonder if maybe he's hurt or injured or what's going on. But nonetheless, Inger getting a lot of the load here as Rufus made the tackle for the drillers. It's going to bring up a second and about five. Inger hands the ball off. This time it was... Run by Colt Paxton, another one of the options with uh, Rice Royal down tonight. Paxton, Grimes, Zubia. Well, with Royal out of the lineup, I mean, you obviously lose a pretty potent offensive threat. You have Grimes back in. Grimes was out when they played Clovis, and he could have made a big difference in that matchup. Yeah, he got hurt when the first series or the second series? Yep. Third and two, trips to the right side. They're going to try to gamble and get a first down, and they do. What a nice job. I say gamble because they kept it right on the hash mark and said, let's go, BHS. What do you have? And they picked up the first down. That smash mouth football, as you see, Anger trying to get lower than the BHS linebacker, and he did. First and ten. Now it looks like we're going to have an official's timeout and maybe an equipment malfunction down there at the 40-yard line. There's a look at Coach Gola right there. He's done an incredible job here with the drillers since he's come to Bakersfield. Seems just like yesterday. Six and a half remaining here in this first half. Anger, shotgun. Right next to him is Paxson. He's got three receivers way out to the right side. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, well, that was Shaq Garrett saying hello to Colt Paxson. Boom. Yeah, I mean, good ran evening. In, looks like he ran into a brick wall, Vance. Welcome to my field. No gain, no loss, though, second and 10. Ingers wants to go to the air, has a man open, floats it out there. Oh, what a interception. fantastic interception. That was a beautiful play by Jermaine Irvin. Brian. A big time play right there by Jermaine Irvin. It wasn't long ago. His dad was on foothill on Bright House, but he wasn't making plays like that at the corner. But great position. He's going to be in a trail technique. He's right in the hip. The ball hangs up a little bit. He goes after the ball, launches up, gets it the highest peak, snatches it from the receiver, and interception drillers. You know, you talked about one of the things with Paul Gola doing a great job. This might be one of his best jobs, Vance, with all the sophomores he's playing, and they're saying it's a rebuilding year. He is taking names this year in 7-0, so great job with Gola. Here we go. Man, that was a beautiful play. Well put, Brian. 546 here left in this first half, and the Golden Hawks stopped on that drive by an interception by Irvin. Here comes Hannibal. Hannibal's thrown down about the 37-yard line. Very athletic interception, Matt. Yeah, you, you look at the aspect that Centennial may have had something going on that drive. I mean, they were able to convert, I think, two first downs on the play or on the drive. And then the blitz comes, and it forces Anger to throw it pretty uh, pretty quickly. And he maybe didn't get his best arm on it. Obviously, as a quarterback, you want to aim for the outside shoulder of the receiver. And he floated that one up just a little bit too high. And a big pick by Irvin. And the only thing you can do as a receiver on that one is try to become the defensive back, and that's launched back into the, the defensive back and dislodge it. The pitch out to the left side. Nice play by that Centennial defense, and they gang tackle him and throw it out of bounds. Good play. Good play. And, Brian, the only other thing I can say, that receiver on that pass route, I think he thought he had the reception. I think he thought he was going to actually make the reception. It was such a sneaky interception as we see a nice play by Michael Martin. So, um, again, going back to the interception, key play. Let's see if it matters. But let's give Centennial defense some credit. They settled down, guys. They got rocked a little bit, took a knockout punch. And they've come back, and now they put the drillers in a third and eight, third and nine, and that's what you want. You want them to be in a passing situation. But, again, they have capable players, and you have to be wary of Kevin Elijah. He's the big player receiver for them. Fumble. 
Hannibal drops it, picks it up. Hannibal still on his feet, finally gets thrown down. Big loss, big play on a third and eight. And the drillers are going to have to punt the football. So you're right, Brian, right on cue. Golden Hawks defense stepping up, making it happen. You know, now can the offense, fellas, get something going? Can the offense put a string of plays or get one big play? Like I said, they're going to get that one-on-one -on -one coverage with the jam. Can you make the drillers play for it? And they've got plenty of time. Now, if you're punting in the CD, you do not want to kick the ball 27. So let's see how the Cornell-headed player does on this. High snap, and the CD catches it. And uh, it's going to be an end over end, but it bounces the opposite way. Cuckoo. Wow. A low end over end actually bounced backwards. Ball goes out of the 34 yard line. So, first and 10 Golden Hawks with 354. Matt, they'd love to get down there and get something. If not six, at least three. Yeah, with 354 left, you have to try to get something on the board here. You don't want to go into the locker room with a big goose egg against your own team. So, 17-0 you know, the score here. Obviously, Centennial, if they hadn't have thrown that interception, who knows what could have happened on that last drive. But now they have another chance because it was no harm, no foul. They were able to hold BHS to a three and out. So let's see what they come back as Bresson back into the game for Centennial. Let's see if we can scoop up something at halftime about this quarterback change and, or interchange, if you will. Maybe, there's a, maybe it's a non-story. Bresson triples out to the left side. Hand off to the right side, and it's handled out there by Paxton. Nice run. Good positive yards. Well, with 3.45 left to go here in the first half, little runs like that aren't going to do you much good. You're eventually going to have to go to the air. You're going to have to trust Bresson. I mean, they're split out trips to the left, and they have Doherty out to the right. So you got to think that maybe somebody will come open in the flats, get the ball, and go out of bounds real quick on an out route. But Centennial's going to have to go to the air here. That's 60 more yards to go in 315. The Golden Hawks have three timeouts. They stay on the ground. They give it to Paxton. He's brought down at about the 45-yard line. So with three minutes and nine seconds, the Golden Hawks have three timeouts. And this brings up a third and in inches. Very, very close to a first down. Time just ticking away here. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to see them go a little quicker to the offensive uh, from the huddle to the ball. Nonetheless, it'll be a third and one here for the Golden Hawks. Everybody packed in tight. All 22 guys in there close. And a struggle, and I think maybe he just was able to get past it. And it was a hard-fought run out there by Alex Zubia. I believe Zubia got it. Just putting a fist up, so that's fourth down. Man. Oh boy! Looks like they're going to call timeout for measurement. Man, I don't see how. I didn't know there was that much give in the measurement and the marking. Goodness! There they had a. third and four inches, and they picked up three inches. Yeah, that's well-known. Uh, what would you call that, a landmark here in Bakersfield? I mean, uh, when you see that, that's pretty intimidating when you come in as an opposing team, seeing that big old drillers, what was that, a, a water tower, oil derrick, whatever you want to call it. Pretty intimidating sight when you're coming in here as a visiting team. I'm going to keep my mouth shut, Vance. The truth will go on tonight and next week. That holds all of Brian Adams' awards here, his four years in BHS. <laughs> Football, basketball, track. B. Adams, you played basketball, huh? Just a little bit. My right. goodness. Yeah, he's a younger, he's a young and that's okay. Hey, nothing wrong with being young. Not at all. B. Adams is a baller. Well, fourth and half an inch, Matt. <laughs> it's gonna be 
I mean, the thing about it is, two minutes, 16 seconds, they pick up this first down. Hopefully during this timeout, they call two plays. They're ready to go. They get the first, and they jump right on it. Possibly no huddle off. It's just go, go, go. Well, but, you think now it's got to be a quarterback sneak, fellas. Yeah, because the reverse side of that is if you don't get it, you give BHS the ball back on their own 45-yard line with 240 and counting left right. to go here. With them, They have two timeouts. so They get run onto the field. Should be a quick snap, and they do. Perfectly, perfectly done. So they should have the play already called. They'll probably just get lined up and go. Bresson looks over. You got to be careful there if uh, we see a replay of that last play. Nasita kind of jumped on the pile at the very end. If you get a nitpicky ref out there, they're going to call you for a late hit. Yeah, well, it was so like obvious, that. too, a yeah. gang tackle. <laughs> Grimes in motion to the right side. Bresson takes a look, bobbles it out to Grimes, gets it to Grimes. Oh, what a beautiful play. A great play by Nasita. He was, Colby Minnie had him. He was blocking him, and Minnie had him, but Nasita just threw him aside and made the tackle. So not a bad effort by both players, but boy, Nasita got the better of that. Well, the well, clock's still running. Exactly, and many has to win that one because that allows your receiver to get to the outside and maybe get out of bounds or get a first down the clock stops. That's one of those ones where he has to lock that block down. Nice job blocking out there right now by Brad Prout, one of those big offensive linemen by the Golden Hawks. I see Prout working hard, number 65, Brad Prout. And he protects the quarterback on this one as well. And Grimes looking for the ball, didn't know where it was. So as we talk about Brad Prout getting that big right tackle over there, giving him a ton of protection, uh, the receiver didn't know the ball was coming. Oh, that was your standard wheel route. That was coming right, right your way, Brian. It definitely was, fellas, and the ball was actually thrown in a good place. As if Thomas never saw the ball, was able to react to it, but that would have been an easy uh, first down and big play. Second and 10, exactly 60 seconds left. And it's Bresson. He's in the shotgun, and he has Zubia next to him. Bresson takes a look. Out to the flats to Zubia. Zubia knows he's going to have to take on some drillers now. He's got, got drillers bounce. coming. And, got to get uh, out of bounds. Ooh, took a hit pointer, a big shot, and the one that delivered it was the driller, and he's the one having a hard time getting up, and that's Darius Dallas. Watch this. You know Zubia, he knows he's going to get hit. They're coming after him. Well, it's fourth down right now, Vance. There's 38 seconds left. If I'm goal, I'd call a timeout here because it's fourth and five. Ugh. Centennial obviously has to punt it. But goal is making no such motion to call a timeout. I think he's content with the 17-0 lead, as well, you know you wouldn't blame him for being. Right. But nonetheless, you have two timeouts left, and the way your offense can move the ball. Well, the score the, the scoreboard operator is off by two downs. I've seen him off by one down before, but he's off two downs. But they don't move the downs. ball well in the air. You know, and that's the thing. If you if you get the punt, you got to move the ball down there. Look, it's going to go in at halftime, tied up, and. Uh, we have six, six being set for the second half, fellas. That's it. 17 to nothing. Drillers leave the field at homecoming up 17-0. We'll be back with the third quarter on Bright House Networks. Bright House Networks is rolling out more ways to watch TV. We're giving you the freedom to watch TV anywhere you are on your choice of devices, computer, laptop, and most tablets and smartphones. Stay entertained with sports, movies, and more from anywhere. All you need is Bright House Networks TV and a My Services account from BrightHouse.com. It's a whole new way to watch TV, available at no extra cost to you. Learn more at BrightHouse.com slash My Services. Wow, I can't believe you just told me that. Well, I felt that I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Would well, you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay. Welcome back, everybody, after the homecoming festivities. 
at Bakersfield High School. What's going on there? Oh, you see, that's our cool little view that we get as we go up about 40 feet in the air, all the way from ground level. And the name of the band was Under. <laughs> so music was provided by Under, one of the hip new local bands. And as we get ready for the third quarter, 17 to nothing, I had a chance to visit with a couple of my buddies, one of them being Bo Redstone and Chris Clayton. Brian Adams was scouring the grounds, talking to some of his buddies. And uh, what'd you do? I just chilled, Vance. I took a seat over there on the near sideline, laid out across the first, uh, the first little seating area that I saw. Took a quick little nap. Got a big day of traveling ahead of me tomorrow. I'm going to go down to El Camino for the BC game and then straight to LAX after that. Smart man. Smart man. El Camino and LAX are like five minutes apart. Don't be late. All right. Drillers with a 17 to nothing lead will receive the football to start this third quarter. And we finally have a little bit of an autumnal chill here for a football game. Last week we're in Shorts and polos, now starting to get chilly. And uh, the drillers will get it up to about the 18-yard line. So uh, let's see if the Centennial Golden Hawks defense can continue what they did for the better part of that first half. Uh, it doesn't seem like it with a 17 and nothing lead, but they played very good defense and kind of, you know, as Hop from uh, AM 1230 was calling the game on uh, 1180, calling the game tonight here live on radio, came down and said hello to us on the sidelines and said, hey, you know, that the, the Golden Hawks defense kind of stopped the bleeding, and I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they did a great job of holding BHS to only 17 points. And, I mean, I say only 17 points because it could have been a lot worse. Let's see how Centennial's defense comes out here in the second half against Hannibal and the Blue Crew. Hannibal behind the quarterback, behind the center, sorry. Takes it, gets up to about the 24-yard line, about a gain of uh, five or six. Well, not a bad way to start the third quarter here with Hannibal, just a simple keeper on the option up the left side. You see they send Pope in motion, and Hannibal, as we've talked about tonight, Hannibal has been pretty questionable in his pitches. Nonetheless, he makes them work, so, I mean, it's uh, more power to him, like I said. He's behind center again. This time it's Nasita up the middle. Nasita chops up about four yards, so let's bring up third and short. Let's go down to the grass and talk to our partner, Brian Adams. Brian, I saw you for a brief second at halftime over with Bo Redstone, then you disappeared. What'd you have going on? Oh, man, I was up there talking to uh, Chris Clayton and Terry Manoy and wow. Randy Robinson, some buddies of mine from back in the day. and. Just chopping it up. Chris Clayton. Hannibal goes to the air. And uh, his intended receiver, Parker Campbell, never knew it was coming until it was too late. So the drillers are held on three and out. So uh, let's see if this can get this Golden Hawk defense fired up. I mean, offense fired up. So uh, that was just bad communication. No, I mean, it has to get the Centennial offense fired up if they want to get back into this game because right now their defense is keeping a minute. I think that's three straight three and outs now forced by the Centennial defense or at least three straight punts forced by the Centennial defense as Silas Nasita goes back to kick to Thomas Grimes and who else is over there at the 40 yard line? A high wobbler down the near side taken by Grimes. Grimes might have a couple of blocks. We'll see. He's getting chased down by Campbell. Gets hammered on a block. Huge and wall. Grimes picks up some territory. Some big territory and goes out of bounds. But the big block was laid out there. Are you kidding me? I mean, look at this wall that forms, Vance. As soon as he, you were said it, as soon as he gets around Parker Campbell, he has a wall of about eight or nine blockers. And you man. see, oh man, Campbell just gets laid out. Looked like Chris DeWeese. Or check that. Or maybe it was Chris DeWeese who laid the block on him. As Grimes steps out of bounds at around the 39-yard line, that's where Centennial's going to take over. And boy, that, that crowd got as loud as we've heard them tonight, Vance. They needed that. Good run back. A good wall. Watch Chris DeWeese. Nice angle right here. Well, yeah, watch DeWeese come in here as... All Grimes has to do is get around the corner. Bam. Oh, 
It's number 12, actually. That's now, Oh, that is Crystal Reese. That was bad special teams, guys. You punted <laughs> to the wrong player. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to point out 72 names on the roster. You pick which one you think it is. And it is an incomplete pass out to the left side. It's my dyslexia, Vance. Apologize for that. For those of you in Kern County that wonder what we're talking about, we were fortunate enough to get away with, I think, the last possible program the very last one. Yeah. in all of Bakersfield High School. So Matt and I are sharing the roster. So we'll point out to each other who made tackles, who made plays. So I'm pointing to Chris DeWeese's name three or four times, but Matt just doesn't <laughs> want to buy the Vance, you have long fingernails. It was number like. 12 <laughs> making that block. Even on the 6-3 play, he still thought it might be somebody else. Here we go, second and 10. They go to Paxson. He's in trouble. Gets maybe a yard. Well, for the first, they try to pass play. A quick pass to the outside on the first play. Now they go up the middle to Paxson. Nothing doing, so it's going to be a third and long again for Centennial. They were fortunate enough at the near the end of the first half to be able to convert on these third and longs. Let's see who they go to here as Bresson in a quarterback once again. You know, guys, I want to give the secondary for the drillers some credit. You know, you have two sophomores back there in Rufus and Dallas, and then now you have Vickers out there, and they're making big plays like they're just veterans. You know, in Dallas, he's the son of Mike Dallas, the bo uh, former boxer and trainer at Bakersfield Powell and uh, the brother of a professional fighter. So just give these sophomores some credit, guys. They're, they're playing some big-time football. A lot of great bloodline athletics here in Kern County. Brian pointed out for us, and there was a flag on the play, and it looks as though it's going to be going against the Golden Ops. It'll come back five yards, so that has to sting a little bit, makes it a third and 15. Yeah, delay of game penalty called oh, against boy. Centennial. You know, I don't think BHS has had a penalty tonight, Vance. I mean, they've been pretty well disciplined. A lot of the flags you've been seeing tonight have been called against the Golden Hawks as they wind the clock once again with nine and a half left to go in the third but you're right Vance it makes it just that much more difficult on the offense and now we have another flag from the sideline you see Golo over there on the far sideline running around like a madman he saw something before the referee saw it well, it was on our sideline where we're at fellas the receiver moved and that is Michael Martins, he moved, so and we I'm not even gonna discuss that tonight, guys. We already know how I feel about those guys moving. Yeah. But you know, this, this, this again, you're playing in the driller wheelhouse, third and long. They like to lease the linebackers and put pressure and go one on one, man coverage with those with those cornerbacks. And so let's see right now what Centennial can do. Third and twenty. 20. Yeah. Twenty. The scoreboard doesn't Update very well here. Bresson from the shotgun, under pressure, floats one up high, hard, and it's in the area of our main man, Brian Adams, but it's very much incomplete, and that's going to bring up fourth and 20. Okay, I'm just going to say this. Do not throw at 12. Just like you don't punt to 27, you don't throw at 12. 12 being, of course, Jermaine Irvin. So Irvin getting the high praise from B. Adams, like don't throw it to him. He's the Darrell Rivas of the driller. And here's the punt, and it's a good one. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. And, uh, oh, did they get it? Did they get it? Right at the one. Well, what are you well, doing back there? Fantastic play. What are you doing back there if you're Elijah? I mean, you fake like you're going to catch it. You fake like you're going to pick it up. I mean, if that ball takes one bad bounce, it's going to hit off you, and Centennial's going to get it at the one-yard line. If you're Elijah, you've got to run to your own sideline, get as far away from that ball as you can because there's nothing you could do at that point. Boy, oh, boy. And now it's first and ten from their own one yard line so a 99 yard drive is what they're looking at you're right matt that was very dangerous and uh, a nice job and it's down there by chagog so the golden Hawks have an opportunity to make something happen here on defense hard count did anybody jump no flags hannibal behind center seated Knocked down early in there. They tripped him up. He got maybe a yard, so second and nine. Might be a bit of a defensive stance here for Bakersfield High School because they have to give at least some room if the, just in case they need to punt the ball because you obviously don't want to punt from the back of your own end zone 
with the way these snappers snap nowadays. I mean, you never know. It could be on the ground, could be over his head. So trying to get some, a little bit of yardage here. Hannibal again going for that hard count, trying to get something for nothing, and Centennial not biting on it. They stay right in the middle of the football field, and Nasita again maybe gets a yard, two yards. Are they trying to set something up, or are they just trying to stay out of trouble? I think they're trying to stay out of trouble, Vance, because you, you've seen the plays that BHS runs. Hannibal runs the option, and you know when you run the option, you run the risk of losing a little bit of yardage, and when you don't have much yardage to give, I mean, they're at the two-yard line. You can't, you can't run anything like that, so they're trying to run it up the middle, play a little smash-mouth football, but right now it's third, and I'm not going to trust the scoreboard anymore. I'm going to call it third and eight. <laughs> Hannibal. Centennial shifts their defense, and there's oh, movement by motion. the trailer. And there's a flag on the play. Uh, probably just will be it. declined. Yeah, absolutely, man. So at this point, you just decline that because it's not a dead ball foul. It's an illegal motion call against BHS. You decline it, they're going to have to punt. If you accept it, it's going to move them back even further. And uh oh. Uh oh. It looks like Hannibal is in a little bit of distress. That is not good if you're a driller fan. So he's a little gimpy on that left side as the drillers will bring the punt team on and Grimes and uh, Clayton will be standing at the driller 40-ish. And keep in mind, Nasita doesn't have the leg that Doherty has. Nasita hasn't been getting off very good punts tonight. I would so move this, up if I'm the return guys, fellas. Yeah, this could put the Golden Hawks in pretty good field position here. So B. Adams having these guys move up a little bit. Here's Nasita, he angles one. And it's going to be taken short. Drop! Fumble! Oh, goodness gracious. Could have been incredible field possession for the Golden Hawks. Dropped at the 40-yard line. Penalties. They've got an interception against them already. Now a muffed punt. Oh. I mean, Centennial's doing all they can to keep that goose egg on the board right now. And I mean, if you're BHS, let's see if Hannibal comes back out there. Looks like he does, but that was a very low line drive punt. And I'm sure, Brian, Perfect. I'm sure I'm sure you've had to return some of these in your career over at UCLA, the low line drivers. And those ones, when they come at you, they come at you with a lot of speed. Well, those are return balls if, you, if you're close Pitch enough pass. to get it. Pitch pass. Doesn't work out. Nice job by the Centennial defense. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Those are the balls that are returnable. We used to call those, when I was a freshman at Southern, we would call those house balls or reservations for six because if you kick it that low, <laughs> you're just reserved six points for the other team. You know, and that's why I said to, to move up a little bit, that he hasn't really driven the ball far. And if you're moving up, it's a little, you know, when it's kicked low like that, you can almost just cut back a couple of steps and then catch it and run. But... You know, great play right there by the special teams from BHS. Right there on the spot, able to jump on it and turn the ball over. And let's see what the offense can do. But the defense right now for Centennial has had their number. Second and 12, misdirection play. The ball handed off to Jeremiah Reddick. And Reddick able to chew up a few yards. Oh, Reddick, look at how many lead blockers he has. I mean, when you run the wing... That wing kind of offense, you're going to have at least two lead blockers every time, but Centennial does a good job of staying home there, limiting Reddick to just two yards, like you said. It's going to be a third and five. As we see Logan Kukuk parking out the plays for the defense. Logan Kukuk, number 42, and look out! Big run up the middle by Reddick, and touchdown saving tackle by Clayton. Yeah, Clayton was the last man of defense there as Reddick just burst through the offensive line. You see he just follows his down, the nice down block right there by number 50, Nick Kidd. And Kidd does a great job of going to the second level right off the bat, taking the outside or taking the middle linebacker rather and the outside linebacker was just chasing Reddick. Clayton able to track him down. Fake to Nasita. Hannibal keeps it. Hannibal chews up about nine yards. It should be about a second and one. And they're right below us now, the football at the 26-yard line. Well, BHS is really hard-pressed to keep the ball out of Hannibal's hands, even though you saw him leave after that last possession, kind of laboring a little bit, and one of his shoulders, one of his arms was at his side. 
But nonetheless, they go right back to him with the option. Pick up eight yards, gonna be second and two. Hannibal behind center. They go to Nasita. Nasita on a fake, and the keeper is Hannibal. Hannibal gets up to the 24-yard line, gets two or three, and he's still just a little bit gimpy. First down. Yeah, gonna be enough for a first down on the left side is they did fake it to Nasita. Fooled, uh, fooled myself as well, Vance, and Hannibal kept it on the left side. Let's see if Hannibal just takes this one single-handedly into the end zone. Nasita, again, another first down. On a first and 10, he gets 11. And you know, Captain, you just feel the wind just go out of the sails of the Centennial stands, the fans, the sidelines on that uh, unfortunate fumble. You just, there's just no life over here. You know, and let's be let's be real. The defense is only giving up seven points. You know, even if they get driven down on this, they get that one drive, seven points. Other than that, the defense has been good for Centennial. Now can they just hold this one time? But not now. That's six. Hannibal scrolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Grillers. That's a beautiful play call. Yeah, it doesn't get any simpler than that. I mean, they fake like they're gonna run. They think like they're going to run the ball, or like they're going to pass the ball, rather. Hannibal rolls out to the right, and as soon as he sees that open lane, you see here on the instant replay, Hannibal has it in a throwing position, still looking, and then I think this is a design throw, and Hannibal is just like, you know what? That's a heck of a lot of green out there. I think I'm just going to take it myself. Reservations for six, my or, man, B. Adams. Or, or was it a designed run? He was going to pass. It? The guys were just covered. Okay. You guys, you got it? Both you got know. it? There's a long loop by Campbell off of the equipment. Hit the C-Train. C-Train, that's a good 50-yarder right there. So, just like that, the drillers were deep in their own territory. And here's another look as Brian and Matt both eloquently stated. Hannibal was looking for a man and said, well, I got about 25 yards of uh, grass here. I'm gonna make a move. The drillers were deep in their own territory. And the Golden Hawks held them, had an opportunity to capitalize, but a fumble on a punt return at the 45-yard uh, line, and uh, that's all the drillers needed. Well, the grave digger, as Brian calls me oh, so boy. eloquently, oh, boy. with 4.02 left to go in the third quarter, I mean, the oh, grave digger's boy. about ready to start pulling out his nails if uh, Centennial doesn't get anything going on this next drive because... This is a gut check drive, and I know we say that every game, Vance, but this really is a gut check drive here for the Centennial offense. They need to put points on the board, whether it be a field goal, whether it be a touchdown, because I don't think their defense, who's been playing a heck of a game, to be honest with you, their offense hasn't given them the support they need. So the Centennial right. offense has to put some points up. Campbell boots into the end zone, and uh, oh, maybe we'll see a flag, and we do. And we do, and uh, Chris DeWeese, who laid out Campbell on a punt return by Grimes, just laid out. They're waving it off. Javon Rufus, wow. and they waved it off. And I don't know if our replay will catch it. It was at the end of the touchback. How can you wave? How can you wave off a dead ball foul? I mean, that's. It's got. It's. Javon Rufus was just depleted. I don't understand how you can wave off a dead ball foul because it's a judgment call. You can't second guess your judgment if you're a referee. Well, the whistle hadn't blown yet. Protect yourself at all times, fellas. Kind of like Floyd Don't Mayweather. run down there on those kickoff covers just tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> you got to have your head on a swivel, and even when the ball's in the end zone, you got to be aware. I concur. B. Adams as we see Colt Paxson. It's like that Mayweather-Ortiz fight. Protect yourself at all times and Ortiz went in to hug Mayweather and Mayweather clocked him with the right and knocked him out and that's what BHS's defense is doing to Centennial's offense right now. They're clocking him with left, rights, roundhouse, jabs. Short gain on that run makes it second and nine for the Golden Hawks. It's going to be Joe Bresson taking the snap. 
from the 21 yard line. He's got Grimes, two others out to the right, and Martins to the left. In the shotgun, they've got to be running low on the play clock here. Blitz comes, Bresson fires, almost intercepted by Nasida as he had to get rid of that one pretty quickly. Blitz was coming by number 45 for the drillers. It looks like he's wearing a, uh, it's Ernesto Juarez. Looks like he's wearing a pajama shirt. Jersey all the way down to his knees. And they're wearing the throwback jerseys. If you notice, the color in the blue is more of a royal blue right, as opposed right. to that, that navy blue that they've been wearing. So it's a yeah. legacy night throwback night. And they're playing some throwback football right now. Third and nine. Breston takes a look at his running back, Paxson, next to him. He has two receivers on both sides. Has the pocket, has the protection, floats it out there, but just not within reach of Martins. And again, well, it was for Grimes, Vance. Grimes ran a post. Okay. And they were looking fade, I guess a streak. But you know, one thing if, if I'm watching BHS, they love to jump on routes. If you have a pump fake, a pump and go, a slant and go, anything like that, I would try it on them. The punt. Oh, what a boot. Fair catch being called out there by Kevin Elijah Jr. And it'll be great field position for the drillers. You're watching Bright House Network's exclusive full game coverage of the high school football game of the week. We are at Bakersfield High School. It's homecoming. It's legacy night. The drillers have legacy blue on, as Brian so aptly noted. They have legacy across their backs. No last name, just legacy. And right now it's a 24 to nothing football game. The drillers in full command with under three to go here in the third quarter. Looks like Army's, Army's jerseys, the uh, United States Military Academy. They have valor, honor on the backs of their jerseys. As Hannibal takes the snap from the 43, hands it up the middle, and still on his feet is Silas Nasida. He's going to get run down at the 18-yard line. It was Chagog on the tackle, and Nasida picks up a good grip of yardage inside the 20. Look at that. That's balance right there. Holding himself up with his left hand, switches hands. Chagog and Clayton able to run him down, though. Nasida doesn't have that breakaway speed, but he got a big chunk of yardage there for the drillers. As Hannibal takes it again at the 17-yard line, he keeps it. Hannibal up inside the 10-yard line, up and over Clayton. Trying to take his legs out. That may be enough for another first down. Let's see where they put it. Nope, it's going to be just short. As you see Hannibal, look at all that open space, Vance. But, oh, man, he swings the ball out there with his right hand. That's something you never want to see. And it was number 44, 42. Brody Scott. A 42, rather. Logan Cookook on the tackles. Second and two now from the nine. In motion, Hannibal looks. Hannibal cuts to the other side of the field. Doesn't have a lot to throw to. Tries to force it in there. Never a good idea. Just should have threw it out of bounds there, but... Nonetheless, it ended up incomplete with a buck 53 left to go in the third. Is it me or does Hannibal just look like he's having fun out there? Yeah, I mean, he's he's enjoying it right now. The way You play your best football when you're having fun, and he's definitely having fun, but he tries to force this one in there, throws it across the grain, something I would never recommend in all my years of playing quarterback. <laughs> Second and two, under two, should be third down, actually. We know not to trust the scoreboard. Hannibal on a keeper. Nice play by the Centennial defense. They said no dice. And with 145 and counting, it'll be fourth and goal from the nine. Well, it's going to be fourth and one from the nine, actually, Vance. And let's see if Gola attempts to oh, right, 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 or elects right. to attempt a field goal here with Campbell, but no. He will not. He'll be go dis for it. Now, disappointed as always. Fourth and one from the nine. All right, they have an opportunity to get inside it. You're right. Hannibal. Look at that gap right up the middle. Quarterback sneak. If I'm there, now they move over. They shift over. Nasida right behind. And they go to Hannibal who flips it out. It looked like it hit the ground. And I think they're going to get enough forward momentum. Uh, I don't know, Vance. But 
in regards to your, you think it hit the ground claim, it wouldn't have mattered because it was a backwards pass. It was a lateral at that point. They didn't point. get it. <clears throat> they didn't get it. No. What an interesting play call on a fourth and one from the ninth. Well, as you'll see on our instant replay, they faked to Silas to see the up the middle. And honestly, Hannibal had his back turned to us, so we didn't necessarily see him with the ball. But he jumped past. He jumped past it to Reddick on the far side, or did he jump past it to Pope? And that's a backwards pass, so even if the ball does hit the ground, that's still a live ball. Well, see, look where he's at. I mean, he's at like a seven-yard line, man. And they didn't give it to him, did they? No, they put the ball at the nine-yard line. You can clearly see he was at the seven-yard line, so that's why I thought he had the first down. Sorry, fellas. Wow. Well, didn't you see that? Yeah, I, I did, yeah, thanks to our people in our truck. Working the replays, doing a great job as always. Into the third quarter as Paxton tries to muscle his way up to the 10 yard line. <clears throat> Regan back in there in the quarterback. Regan Inger. Watch this, watch his forward progress. There's the 10, there's the nine, there's the eight. Oh, he's at the seven. the seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> well. What are you going to do now? I mean, you have a 24-point lead. I'm sure that goal is not too upset with that because of the fact that his defense is pitching a big, fat goose egg up on that blue scoreboard. Inger remains in the shotgun. Inger decides to keep, cuts up, and uh, battles up to about the 16-yard line. And uh, for all intents and purposes, that's probably going to do it for the third quarter. A 24 to nothing lead for the Drillers right now, unless they get one more off the Golden Hawks. I don't know if they will. That'll do it. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of BHS. They lead 24 to nothing here on Bright House Networks. I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Wouldn't you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay. Back here for the fourth quarter at Bakersfield High School. BHS leads 24 to nothing over Centennial. Speaking of these Golden Hawks fans, we interviewed Jim Laurent in the pregame show. And Jim Laurent is the head coach of the Jack Frost Eagles. They are the uh, feeder team, if you will, for Centennial High School. The Eagles are actually going to be playing in the championship game tomorrow morning against the Golden Valley Jaguars team. The Eagles, two years in a row, have been the Jack Frost champions looking for their third straight. And since I've grown up, the, the Eagles have always been the dominant team in Jack Frost football. And that's why Centennial has such great athletes year in and year out. Jim Laurent does a great job developing these kids and his staff. I have to give credit to his staff as well. So first and 10 for Centennial. Power run, helmet to helmet hit. Uh, not intentional, though. Let's go down to the grass for Captain Brian Adams. Well, Cap, if... The drillers are to hold on here and notch another victory, move them to 8-0. They'll continue to rise in everyone's uh, expectations. Next week, they will travel to Stockdale to take on the Mustangs with D.J. Martin. Uh, but essentially, these are, uh, uh, sorry, they'll be hosting the Mustangs, but essentially this is a driller team that I don't know how many, uh, I don't know how many hurdles they're going to have in front of them here locally for the rest of the season. Well, Vance, if Liberty wins tonight, you know, they'll be undefeated in the league, and it's a good chance that they'll meet in the – will that be the last week in the season, Matt? 
Uh, Liberty and BHS, yep, the last week on November 10th. Next week they play Stockdale. Yep. And then so, you look at the playoffs after that. Yeah, and that could be a showdown for the league title. But, you know, I think the one thing that you got to like about BHS and we've done throughout the years, they just don't, like you said, Matt, make a lot of penalties and kill themselves traditionally. Well, BHS's, BHS's uh, schedule here in their program has them playing at home as the ball is almost, almost picked off on the far side by number four for BHS, and that's Sonny Rufus. That's another one that's super soft. So, you know, like I said, these guys are playmakers. They're just not sophomores playing. They're, they, you know, coming up and making a minor contribution. They're big-time playmakers. It has the Stockdale game next week listed for here at Griffith Field. Right, right. They'll be at Liberty to close out Ooh, the regular season. That should be a good one. But at last check, Liberty was down to Independence. Throws it, and uh, will there be a flag? Everybody, the entire coaching staff for the Golden Hawks, hoping to get a flag, no flag. And uh, that'll bring up a fourth down, and the punt team will come on from the Golden Hawks. So the driller defense holds again. Yeah. Brian, have any players on that defensive squad for BHS that uh, you would single out tonight? Bad snap, picks it up. Long, long punt, though. And a BHS bounce goes back to the 45. Any singular names on that driller defense, Brian? You know, I mean, I got, obviously we got to say the play Jermaine Irvin did was probably the most spectacular tonight. But I think the one thing about them, Vance, that makes them so good is they just play as a team. Different guys make plays in each series, yeah. and I think that's what makes them so strong. So there's not one player tonight that I would think they had it's such a great game that you would single them out, but definitely played together as a group and uh, we just de took over the Centennial offense. Timeout's call. Coach Gola wants to have a word with some of his guys. Uh, I don't think he sees what he wants to see, so he jogged out to the football field, called everybody over to the sidelines, gives us a chance to take a quick break. No, Vance, uh, actually what he's doing is pretty smart. He's pulling out Hannibal, he's putting in the roof as the sophomore, okay. and he just called timeout so he can get a few snaps before the – Series, the, uh, the series starts, so good, good calls, good timeout. That way you don't have any kind of mishaps and get them both used to a new center, the center used to a new quarterback and the quarter, and the defensive back getting used to taking snaps. Very good. A couple of surprising scores uh, at halftime, Vance, reading Zach Ewing's blog from the Bakersfield, California. Independence was up on Liberty 13-7. to Independence was up 1-6. Independence was up on 6-1 and one Liberty 13-7 oh to seven at half. Stockdale was up 7-6 to six on Frontier. There's a potential matchup, obviously, for next week, BHS and Stockdale. And Garces was up 10-3 to three over Foothill at the half. 10-3. to 10-3. Uh, low scoring. What about Frontier? There. Frontier was down 7-6 to six to Stockdale. Yeah. 7-6. Seven, 7-6 six. Seven six with DJ Martin back in the game. Martin has two unofficial touchdowns. His first touchdown obviously counted. The second one was a 40-yard rush that got called back because of a penalty. So potential matchup for next week, BHS Stockdale. We may be there. We may be in Wasco up the road. A couple of choice, a tough choice. Will it be BHS Stockdale game or are we going to cover that Wasco to Hatchaby game? The drama is building in the Bright House Productions truck right now. I'll tell you, Vance, that would be a heck of a matchup watching that high-powered Wasco offense take on the Steve Denman coach, Tashby Warriors, whose team's good on both sides of the ball. I mean, oh, man. Matt Alvarez lobbying for his selection right now. Brian Adams, sell me on Stockdale BHS next week. The score here is 24 nothing. Vance, you may actually make a hard sell, but I guess what we can say is we haven't seen the phenomenon yep. Yep. in DJ yep. run the ball. I think it's two, a very tough choice between football games. Will we see the Wasco to Hatchapi matchup, or will we get to see the phenomenal DJ Martin on his first uh, Bright House game of the season? We don't know. The powers that be will make the decision. Did I lobby for the Wasco game? I didn't know that. I must have done it unintentionally. Uh, you gonna you gonna drive me up there, Vance? It's thirty minutes up the road. To hey, Brian, how, how do you call unintentional when he talks about 
the vaunted. I have a truth, of Vance. I have uh, a truth with him tonight. Oh, you <laughs> and next week. <laughs> Why? Still owes me lunch, All our way. viewers get to miss out on the great banter and collegial fun between you two. When you guys have a truce, who wants a truce? This is football. There's no truce in football. <laughs> you got to want him to come back he, each week. Fourth and one. Yeah, it looks like BHS is going to line up to punt here. Pasita stands just behind his B on the BHS. Roll punt. And he, he roll punts it. it, and he punts it to the concession stands. <laughs> <laughs> that was what Cody Rigney looked like last week for BC. <laughs> Renegades had a tough night at Ventura in the fog. For those of you that were there, you know that it was a chilly, frosty, very foggy night. Not the best night for our Bakersfield Renegades. However, they will rebound tomorrow night against one of the top teams in the state. El Camino seems like every Saturday night it's against one of the better teams in the state. That's the conference we play in. So the Renegades at El Camino. I hope you can listen in if you're not there joining us. And we have a first and 10 Centennial. Gresson, the quarterback again, back in the shotgun, 8-25. The 2-0 Centennial Golden Hawks trying to keep from getting shut oh. out. And, oh, the head hunting has begun out there for Bresson. And Shaq Garrett making a run at Bresson here at the end of this play. Watch this, Kern County. You're looking at Bresson thinking he's got some time, thinking he's got a pocket, and then, oh, well, let me get the, down. Yeah, the pocket collapsed at the very end of the play, and Garrett able to swallow Bresson up. You know, I listening to uh, Coach Chudy at today's practice, he said that the Gades, you know, they still have a lot to play for. If they win out, they could possibly make their own bowl game, the Golden Empire Bowl, and get a lot of fans in the seats one last time, besides next week's home game. Nice play there, Bresson on a keeper, Bresson. Did he slip and fall halfway through that run? Because if he would have stayed upright, it looked like he could have gone a long way, Vance. I think he just saw three blue jerseys coming down on him. So you'll see here, he's not really down. Oh yeah, he is kind of dragging his feet. He kind of took a toe drag there, but he saw a big blue wall coming at him as well. And this brings up a third and two, third and two. What do you like here for a call, Captain? Third and two, trips to the right side. I'm thinking he might try to roll Bresson out that way. If he can't throw the ball, he can maybe run for a first down. But you don't have time with those front guys from the drillers coming at you. Illegal yeah, motion. We've got illegal motion on the running back. He got a little happy, so now it's going to be third and seven. And Bresson is dinged up. He's running off the sidelines there. His left elbow or his left wrist or left hand, something on his left arm or the at extremity is not feeling good. See how he's holding it down, Brian? Well, what he has on the left side over there, he has... He has his plays on his left side. Yeah, arm. that's what his play his play card. Yeah, but he got up and was holding it kind of... kind of A little awkwardly. Yep. Bresson was another kid that played for uh, Jim Lorenz, Jack Frost Eagles. Was a backup to Kessler there as well. It's good to see Bresson, though, out of Kessler's shadow. He's been able to blossom his senior year. He's done a great job leading this... Centennial team to a 4-2 and two record thus far. Looks like they're going to fall to 4-3 and three tonight unless they can mount some sort of miraculous comeback here on homecoming night. 6.45 and counting. Bresson sends Grime in motion right in front of him. Goes to Grime. Read perfectly by the driller defense. And the big hit laid in there by Nasita. And Coach Nixon having a word with Mike uh, Matt Martins. Sorry, Michael Martins about um, a downfield block responsibility, I believe, that he did not get. Well, when you're in a doubles like that on the right side and you have a cornerback and an outside linebacker or possibly the strong safety coming up to cover, there's not much you can do if you're the outside receiver as Nasita just goes in there and plants him. Yeah, because you see on the left side of this on the left side of the screen right there, there's Martins. He can't do anything about that outside linebacker Nasita coming in. End over end punts probably gonna be taken. Good field position, 35, but the Golden Hawks trying to push him back. A ah, nice job. Gets up to about the 38-yard line. Again, a nice run back by uh, Jermaine Irvin. So Irvin, another junior, making his name known on this historic football team. 
This is a school marked by championships, judged by championships. They're a team and an organization that is expected to win every year, as we talked about last week. Not always easy or fair as the ball taken up to about the 44-yard line. Now, Brian, Vance, did you ever feel that when you were in the blue crew? Like, hey, we have to win. Uh, my senior year, Vance, like, it, you have to understand, there was a period of about 20 years where there was not much winning for the driller tradition. And, you know, unfortunately, for the, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately for these kids, you know, we've been winning as drillers since the late 80s. So there's a, there's more pressure on them to have to perform and, and be up to that standard. Our our pressure was on ourselves is to reestablish that tradition. That's what Pat Preston wanted to do. That was his goal. Fortunately, we were able to do that. Uh, God blessed us all to be there at the same time. We had over 10 guys off that 88, 89 team play Division One college football. So we were very talented, very great coaches. But Pat Preston and his staff, so and the tradition got rebuilt, so to say. So. These guys have a much different, much different um, pressure on them, Vance, because people every year expect them to win, you know. And even this year, they were they were going to be rebuilding, and there wasn't much expected of these guys. And here they are with all these sophomores and a couple seniors, mostly juniors, and they're dominating again. So, like I said earlier, I think this is probably one of Coach Goals, in my opinion, one of his better coaching jobs as he's been a driller coach. No, Coach Gold, if you talk to Coach Gold, he, he's never going to talk rebuilding. That's never going to come out of his mouth. That's never going to be part of his vocal philosophy. Um, just, you know, you're looking at two of the great Kern County coaches here in Gola and Nixon. Tonight, the driller is getting the better of the Golden Hawks. The Golden Hawks defense does hold. Here comes a punt. Nasita hammers one, and it's taken at the 25 yard line. And uh, looking for some decent uh, field position here. The ball is taken out there by Andrew Doherty. Doherty gets up to about the 38-yard line. Yeah, doesn't that bode well for the future, though, for BHS, knowing that they're playing so many sophomores and juniors? And obviously, you know, you're seeing a lot of uh, younger players get some PT here in the late stage of this game with four and a half left to go. And I think the future, you know, they – there's just so much upside for this driller team and for this driller future. Well, kids want to come here now. Like I was saying, in, in 87, 86, you know, you didn't have open enrollment, and people weren't, af you know, weren't afraid of drillers. In 87 season, you know, Vance, your Arvin Bears beat the drillers to keep them out of the playoffs in the rain. So, you know, who would today would say the drillers would get beat by Arvin High? You know, it's just not something you would hear today, but that's the state of the football program, you know, over 20 years ago. 4-14 remains in this football game. Interesting points, great history, brought to you by our captain, Brian Adams. Matt Alvarez, a Foothill High Trojan. And we dip below four minutes here. The Golden Hawks trying to get off the snide, get something on that scoreboard. Driller defense trying to say no or saying no as we speak, but we'll see how it goes. Bresson, audibilizing. Bumble, picks it up, throws it. Ooh, dangerous from the very beginning. He dropped it, picked it back up, and threw it out into the area of Darius Dallas. And Darius Dallas... As Brian said, son of a Foothill Trojan, Mike Dallas. Oh, sketchy stuff here. Yeah, Bresson, yeah. if I was if I was Bresson, I would just either throw that out of bounds or just fell on top of it instead of trying to make something of it right there. I mean, there's just too great of a risk to throw it out there and with a to Doherty with a man on him, Brian. Well, I think at this point, you got to throw the, the uh, you know, the bucket out the window and just go for it. I mean, what, if they grab it, what's the difference? Bresson floats one out to the corner, and it is out of the reach of Elijah. He wanted it. It was intended out there for Kobe Mini. And uh, with three and a half left, fourth and 15, and Coach Nixon saying, let's just punt this football and get it out of here. You know, with all the talk of the drillers and the Arvin Bears back in the day and me being a Foothill alumni, I'm going to have to add that Foothill have a couple good teams back then with Coach Permenter and uh, Brian. How was Foothill back when you were playing? Foothill was uh, was all right. They were they were not uh, 
the team with Rashawn Sheehy, who was after me, but and Joey Porter and those guys. But uh, they were they were a decent team. You know, like I said, they were a team. That's how I was telling you about that trap game. Because I've been there. When you have these games where you're not playing competition, you're blowing everybody out, then you have a quality team who can beat you if they have a good night, and you end up getting stuck in a battle. And that's why I was telling you about that last week. But speaking of Foothill Trojans, you know, I got I bumped into Lonnie Shelton, you know, who Vance arguably might be the greatest athlete ever to come out of here. When you start thinking he was a high school All-American in three sports. Wow. Lonnie he was Shelton. Track, basketball, and football. So, you know, that that tells you what I, level he was at. I've had the pleasure and honor of interviewing Mr. Shelton and attending his camps when I was a kid at Arvin High. Unbelievable. First and 10, instead of the scoreboard saying fourth and 15, and oh, what a nice move, a fake option. And he's still on his feet, still chomping up yards, and so now we're gonna see Aswani Rufus, the sophomore. Well, that was sweet. While his counterpart, Joe Bresson, got his numbers back. 5 of 17 for 15 yards through the air for Centennial. I mean, that's just a testament to how great this BHS defense is, constantly pressuring Bresson. And you see on the other side of the ball, Rufus able to just rack off about 50 yards on that run, gets all the way down to the 21-yard line as Rufus is going to take the snap. Two wide, one wing, one in the backfield for Rufus, who's under center with 2.51 left to go. They send the man in motion. Rufus hands it off up the middle. And with the ball's number 20, Jonathan Malone picks up a couple yards. And more pink towels go flying. Matt, if you're Coach Nixon, where do you go from here? I'm, you, you have to realize that you just got beat by a superior team. However, they shot themselves in the foot, Vance, with early penalties, early turnovers. Centennial could be in this game right now. I'm not saying that they would be leading or that a good point. it would be a closer game, though. It would be much closer than what the score indicates. Obviously, a zero on your side of the scoreboard is very disheartening, and I'd be the first one to tell you about that. I got shut out four straight games my senior year. Yeah, that, uh, and It's a very disheartening feeling, but at the same time, BHS, like I said last week, and you know we kind of argued about it, but BHS is in a different world right now. I think Frontier, I think the Frontier game really woke kind him of, up. Yeah, it, it woke them up saying, like, oh, hey, here's what we're in for, guys. And they knew that this Centennial team was going to be a, a team that wouldn't necessarily just lay down for them, and they didn't. Centennial's defense has kept this score 24 to nothing because if their defense were playing as bad as their offense right now, it would be looking ugly when you open the paper tomorrow morning. So if you're Coach Nixon, you have to rest on your laurels, and you know you can't you can't be too disheartened about this. And you just have to put it behind you and look forward to the next game. Rufus keeps it, gets brought down about the 14-yard line. All right, Cap, you're Paul Gola. It's homecoming night. You've performed well in front of your home crowd on legacy night what do you go under the tunnel and tell these guys in the blue crew well first of all defense way to re rebound from last week we were a little rusty we didn't play the defense that we know how to play last week we hadn't been challenged in a while we came out tonight played good defense but i'm not going to be happy with my offense because my offense really didn't do wasn't explosive you know, seven of the points of the 24 were scored off an interception return. And then the other, one of the touchdowns was based on basically a short field off to a muff punt. You know, this is really their first drive as Rufus goes in the score. Since the early game. It's an early part of the ball game. Very good. Touchdown, drillers. Aswani Rufus was not going to be denied. He was hit early in that play and drug a couple of Golden Hawks, at least one Golden Hawk full time into the end zone. He absolutely positively wanted to get into the end zone. You take a look here, he's hit pretty much at the line of scrimmage and he just decides to carry Reggie Harvey, says see you later and I'm going in and never went down. So touchdown drillers, the sophomore gets in and now we'll see Parker Campbell do what he does. And uh, that's a beauty. It's up against the brush in the back. So the Drillers, 31, Centennial 0. 
with 40 seconds remaining. For all of you St. Louis Cardinals fans, congratulations to you. I'm sure you're pretty happy about things. You were one strike away a couple of times last night, and now you are Major League Champions. Congratulations to all you Cardinals fans. My family lives out pretty close to St. Louis, so they're pretty excited. Not my whole family, but a big part of them. Are the Texas Rangers becoming the new Buffalo Bills? The two in a row. Oh, I mean, boy, oh boy. They came so close. Well, I mean, last year they were a little overmatched with San Francisco, but nonetheless, this year, they were two times one strike away from being the World Series champions. And wow. That yeah. game should have been over last night on Freeze's long ball to right field. Should oh, have been done. Vance, I was just going to say that. I was going to say, you know, I don't know a lot about baseball. Should've I didn't play done. a lot of baseball. But don't you think you should be given a little more effort if the World Series is riding on that one catch? If I was uh, an outfielder, I would run through the wall to get to that You could tell he got ball. thrown off. You could tell his, his, his uh, sight line or his judgment got thrown off and just uh, wasn't in a position to make the catch. And I think I, it, even Freeze thought it was caught. So, uh what an, what an incredible comeback for the Cardinals. Tony La Russa, the, <laughs> the magician. Oh, that guy's a magician for sure. He's going to get a pay raise. Pujols Duncan, is going to go to the Angels. Duncan is hitting coach. Been around a long time. I mean, uh, pitching coach. Mark McGuire, the hitting coach. Well, get get this, Vance. I mean, now Pujols' price tag goes up that much more as he's going to be an unrestricted free agent, free to go wherever he wants. He'll play How much? St. Louis. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. You think if the Yankees offered him a three hundred billion dollar contract because they billion. can afford it? Three hundred billion. You never listen, know. Listen, our cameraman Kevin almost fell off the scissor lift. Three hundred billion. Three hundred billion. You are making dollars. this tough on me, Come young on, Mateus. Brian. This truce you have is letting down uh, all of our viewers. Uh, no. Obviously, we got I'm... playoffs and other things. Can Plus, I, I got to pay off his lunch. When I pay off his lunch, then I'll be able to say something. In right, case let's... you guys have never heard of sarcasm, that was a bit of sarcasm I was using there. $300 billion. However, his price tag is going to go way up. Here we go. Back to football. Last 40 seconds of this deal, and the refs blow the whistle before it goes. Just want to. On the night of game seven, we'd be remiss of us to not at least talk about it for a minute or two. So, uh, congratulations to the Cardinals. And uh, the Golden Hawks get a free five yards, and it'll be first and five. They're on their own 25 with 40 seconds remaining in this high school football game of the week. And it's a keeper. And a nice run up to the 45-yard line. It was quarterback Regan Inger. So Regan Inger, nice run to get some more yards. Yeah, Inger's definitely showing some will. Some pride in his Golden Hawks wearing that gold helmet glittering in the lights that we have here, and he's able to pick up a good bit of yardage. First down for Centennial. Regan, try to do it again this time, doesn't get it to go. And I believe that we're going to start shaking some hands. We see the Centennial coaching staff walking on the field, and uh, we're about to see the BHS staff walking on the field. For our director, Bernie Johnson, Tony Ombras, Zach Flores, Dave Farnes, Kevin Willey, Brian Adams on the grass, my partner, Matt Alvarez. I am Vance Palm. We sure hope you enjoy Bright House Network's high school game of the week. BHS homecoming, 31-0 over Centennial. We'll see you next week. We don't know. Will it be BHS Stockdale or will it be Wasco Tehachapi? Tune in to find out. Good night. God bless. It's high-speed internet service that can seamlessly connect all your favorite wireless devices so everyone in your home can accomplish more in less time. And our wideband technology has the bandwidth that meets your needs for online video, gaming, large file downloads, and any other possibilities you discover. Create an internet experience like no other with Roadrunner Lightning. Call today and get free installation. Learn more at brighthouse.com slash lightning. This is wideband. Wow, I can't believe you just told me that. Well, I felt that I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Wouldn't you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay.
I can record my favorite programs in one room and watch them on any TV in my DVR network with options to record up to 120 hours of HD shows. More shows, more rooms, more flexibility, more love. Learn more about Bright House Network's Whole House DVR at brighthouse.com slash DVR.